I still believe that in 2019 and into 2020, the U.S. economy is going to be fine. We're, we're going to have about 3% real GDP growth. And part of this is coming from the consumer. And, and I get it. Some of the surveys, ISM manufacturing, the market, PMI, have, uh, have dipped in the uh, under 50, and people are worried that companies are so uncertain that they're not going to invest. But what's happening is the consumer and is so strong because wages and employment continue to rise that inventories are falling and companies are going to have to reverse course because otherwise they're going to lose sales. So I think this worry that companies are so uncertain about the future that they won't produce is going to be overwhelmed by the consumer. In this case, it really is a consumer-led economy. The topic of foreign uh, slow growth is fascinating to me. Uh, the United States cut corporate tax rates significantly, uh, which made us much more competitive. We've also cut regulations significantly, which has done the same thing. Uh, and, and because Europe and other countries have not followed suit, they've become less competitive. Uh, and that means that U.S. companies are not pushing overseas as much as they used to. Um, and foreign companies are more willing to push toward the United States than they were before. And as a result, we're seeing slower growth in Europe. That's not affecting the United States in the way that a lot of people think. It's actually resulting in faster growth in the U.S. because what's, what's happening is we're pulling world growth toward the United States. Having said that, some slower growth in Europe uh, does affect, well, uh, for example, the S&P 500 has 40% of its earnings that come from overseas. But we're not talking about going from 8% growth to minus 8. We're talking about going from 2 to a half or 2 to 1%. So at the margin, it will slow down growth in earnings from overseas. But I think faster growth in the U.S. will overwhelm that. So from uh, an earnings perspective, I think that U.S. companies are going to be in good shape. The number one thing that's pushing profits and earnings up for U.S. corporations, I think most people miss, and that is a move toward technology. We are finding cheaper and more productive and more efficient ways of doing just about everything. I think about U.S. airlines who shut down all their ticket offices and replaced it with an app or Amazon, which is different than Sears. And, and I know Amazon's not the most profitable company in the world, but what's happening is they're using technology to increase margins, to increase the efficiency, not just of their own customers, uh, but themselves as well. And we're seeing this translated uh, across the spectrum. Uh, one of my favorites is the fracking world, where it literally 10 years ago took 70 days to frack a well. Uh, and today it takes 10 days to frack a well, and the yield from the well, uh, where it only takes 10 days to frack, is significantly higher uh, than the 70-day uh, well was 10 years ago. So uh, profit margins are, are going to remain high, and it's mainly because of technology. Technology has never moved this fast, uh, and it will never move this slow again either. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm disappointed in the Fed. Uh, they had uh, lifted the federal funds rate up to 2.375%. It was uh, not hurting growth. It was not causing anyone uh, to not make an investment. I know that's a double negative. But the bottom line is, is that they weren't tight. There's $1.4 trillion in excess reserves. Uh, nonetheless, they have reversed course. They're cutting interest rates. They're talking about doing QE again. Uh, I don't believe quantitative easing is what drove our economy in the first place, but the, the, I guess the only good news that I can see out of this is that the Fed's nowhere near being tight. And when I look back over the last 50 years, it's a tight Fed that has caused recessions. So the fact that they've reversed course actually reduces the odds of recessions in the next couple of years. Uh, it does increase the odds of inflation, but over the next 18 to 24 months, the fact that the Fed's reverse course, even though I disagree with it, uh, it, it's not a negative for the economy or the stock market. In fact, it's a positive. 
I, I don't think so. I think what, what's fascinating is the Federal Reserve did quantitative easing. Uh, it, it did not boost growth in the U.S. We were stuck in that 2% growth range. Uh, in fact, when they started doing quantitative tightening and raising interest rates, economic uh, activity uh, picked up. I'm not saying it's because they raised interest rates, uh, but right now I kind of look at the Fed. They've changed the way they manage monetary policy. There are all these excess reserves in the banking system. Interest rates are low. I don't think that's, that's the e number one, number two, or number three driving force behind economic growth. I still think the number one driving force is technology and the reduction in costs coming, uh, especially in uh, uh, IT, uh, it, it's just amazing. Apps cost less, uh, phones, computers, chips, all of those things cost less, and as a result, margins are picking up. Uh, I'll add one last thing, and that is if you really try to figure out where growth is coming from, Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen have never fracked a well. Uh, they've never written an app. Uh, they don't know how to build a 3D printer. Uh, those are the things that are driving U.S. growth, not Federal Reserve policy.